Agamasing! This is Surbas of Surbas TV. In this video, we are going to learn the different components of the scientific method and how can you use these steps in solving problems. Are you ready to learn? If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and comment hashtag Agamasing. Let's go! Have you ever wondered how scientists find answers to their questions? How do they find solutions to the problems they encounter? Scientists use a step-by-step -step procedure in solving problems. This procedure is called a scientific method. The scientific method is a way of solving problems. It is a systematic way of solving a problem and answering questions about the world around us. It is like a recipe that you follow to come up with delicious food. We can use the scientific method to understand our world even better. A scientific method consists of seven components or steps. These are making an observation, asking a question, formulating a hypothesis, testing the hypothesis through experimentation, recording and analyzing the results, drawing a conclusion, and communicating the results. Let us now discuss the steps. The first step of the scientific method is making an observation. Observation is the process of getting information about the things around you. What do you use to observe the things around you? If your answer is senses, then you are right. These senses include the sense of hearing, sense of sight, sense of smell, sense of taste, and sense of touch. Take a look at this picture. What possible observation can you make? One observation that you can state on this scenario is, the tomato plant that is placed in an area with sunlight has a lot of roots. On the other hand, the tomato plant that is placed on a shaded area has lesser fruits. After making an observation, the next step is asking a question from your observation. Your question should lead you to the problem. A problem is a question that you want to solve or the things you want to discover. One of the possible questions that you can ask from our observation a while ago is, why the tomato plant located where there is sunlight have more fruits than the tomato plant located on a place where there is a little amount of sunlight? The next step that we need to do is formulate a hypothesis from our question. A hypothesis is an educated guess, a tentative answer, or a potential answer to the question or problem asked. The hypothesis must be stated in such a way that it can be tested through an experiment and should contain variables. Variables are the factors or parameters that we controlled, changed, or measured in an experiment. A hypothesis will also serve as your guide in designing your experiment. A hypothesis is usually written in the if-then format. The hypothesis or possible answer to our question earlier is, if tomato plant is placed in an area where there is enough sunlight, then it will produce more fruits. The next step that we need to do is to test or verify our hypothesis. To test if the hypothesis is correct or not, we need to design, develop, and perform an experiment. An experiment is a series of tests used to verify the hypothesis. Your experiment should contain all the variables involved in it. Variables are the measurable characteristics or parameters that can be modified or changed in an experiment. There are three types of variables. Independent variable, which is the variable or condition that you can change in an experiment. A dependent variable is a variable or condition that you measure or observe. 
and controlled variable which is the variable that you keep constant or unchanged during an experiment. We are going to elaborate on these variables in our next video. For our example, we want to test our hypothesis earlier which is, if tomato plant is placed in an area where there is enough sunlight, then it will produce more fruits. We will design an experiment testing the effects of sunlight on the number of fruits that tomato plant will produce. The independent variable will be the amount of sunlight. The number of fruits that a tomato plant will produce is the dependent variable. The possible controlled variables that must be kept constant are the amount of water, type of soil, type of plant, and the size of the pot. Aside from variables, your experiment should also contain the materials and the procedure that you are going to use. The experiment should also be repeated several times to make sure that the first result is not just an accident. The next part is recording the data and analyzing the results. This step is where you will report, interpret, and explain what happened in your experiment. You can use charts and graphs in presenting your data and results to make it easier to visualize for your audience. Data are the information that you gathered in your experiment. The next part of the scientific method is drawing a conclusion. The conclusion is the summary of the results you gathered in your experiment. This will give you an answer if your hypothesis is correct or not. If the hypothesis is correct, this may be the answer to your problem. If not, you need to repeat the experiment or think a new approach to improve your procedures. You can also go back to the first step if needed. For our example, the possible conclusion to our problem is Plants such as tomato plants that are placed in an area with enough amount of sunlight produce more fruits than those plants placed in less amount of sunlight. Based on this statement, we can say that our hypothesis, if tomato plant is placed in an area where there is enough sunlight, then it will produce more fruits is correct. After making a conclusion, the next step is to communicate your results. You need to inform others about the result of your experiment. Professional scientists communicate their results by publishing it in scientific journals, presenting it on a poster, or by presenting it during a conference. You can also share your findings just like the scientists. And those are the different components of a scientific method. Again, these are making an observation, asking a question, formulating a hypothesis, testing the hypothesis through an experiment, recording and analyzing the results, drawing a conclusion, and communicating the results. You may find other versions of the scientific method, but you should remember that their purpose is the same. That is, to find solutions to our problem in a logical and organized way. And that ends our discussion about the components of the scientific method. In our next video, we are going to discuss in detail the different variables in an experiment. See you on our next science lesson. Ugh, amazing!